Hey guys, today um, I'm going to do a short little lesson on mandalas. Here is a picture of a mandala if you've never seen one before. These are a symbol that are often found in Hindu and Buddhist um, religions. So mandalas are really geometric, neat shapes. Um, for those of you that like Zen tangles, these kind of incorporate a lot of Zen tangles. It's just adding on and on and on. Originally with today's project, I was actually gonna have you guys do um, your own mandalas on little like rocks, but I looked around in my yard and guess who doesn't have any rocks in their yard? I have tiny little like gravel pebbles in the driveway, but I don't have any actual rocks. <laughs> so. I'm just going to be doing some on construction paper. If you want, you can also do yours on construction paper, or if you want, you can actually find a nice little rock. I looked everywhere. The closest thing I could find was like a big chunk of a brick that fell off of something. So I'm just going to be using construction paper. For this project, you really don't need a lot. You'll need some paint. Um, you'll want a pencil and you'll want just a couple Q-tips. And these are what we're going to use to make all of our little circles. Um, make sure you visit the website. On the website, I will include links to a lady whose YouTube page is devoted to making these. Um, that's where I got the idea for this. So make sure you check that out. For my colors of paint today, I decided to use the colors of the rainbow. So we're gonna go in rainbow order. For those of you who don't know what the rainbow order is, it's just the way the colors progress. So it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Every other one is a primary color. So we have our red, our yellow, and our blue. And then the colors in between them are the secondary colors that the two primaries make. So red and yellow make orange, yellow, blue make green, and then blue and red make purple. This white paint over here is to help me make my Q-tip so I can actually use it. So before you get started, you do have to take a few minutes to get your Q-tips ready. I already have a couple ready so I can get started right after I show you what to do. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of the Q-tips and you're gonna pull off all of the cotton on one end. I'm gonna pull it all off. If you have um, the Q-tips that are made with plastic instead of like paper or whatever, they might not work as well with this one. The rest of them should be fine though. So we have one end without any fluff on it. On the other end, you're gonna take off about half of the fluff. So you're not taking off all of it, just about half. And then with the extra, I'm just gonna kind of wrap it around. So we have one end with a very fine point, one end with a little bit of a bigger one. And then over here, we're gonna keep this one completely full. Then you're going to take your paint and you're just going to lightly coat it. The reason we're doing this is once it's dry and it's been lightly coated in this paint, then your fluff won't be like getting everywhere. If you try to use these while the, um, the stuff is all loose, the more you use the Q-tip, the more it's gonna like get messy. So you're just going to smooth them down with a little bit of paint. Really, you don't need a ton of paint. It shouldn't take that much. Then once you have that all done, you are ready to get started. Um, you might also want a paper towel nearby just to help you keep things clean. All right, so now we are ready to get started with our actual project. We are ready to get started. We have our paper. Again, you can also find a rock and paint it black or white, give it a base coat and then add to it. Um, we have our Q-tips, which we coated with paint to make them more, less fluffy. And we have our pencil and paint. To get started, we are going to start by putting a dot in the middle. So I'm gonna start with red because I said I was gonna go in color order. And I'm using the biggest Q-tip piece that we painted. 
And I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger than just that one dot. Um, something the lady in the YouTube videos mentioned also was you could use like a, um, an eraser on an unused pencil. I don't have any of those laying around, so I'm going to start off just like that. And then you can, oops, you can take a paper towel and just gently dab off the color. Don't press too hard because you will get it all messed up, but if you just kind of gently wipe it off, that'll be good. Okay, so we have our middle. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our smallest Q-tip. I'm going to go to the orange. And I'm going to start by going dot, dot, like that. So I'm going to have these two right across from each other. Then I'm going to have two right across each other like that. Then I'm going to add two more in between each one. By doing the crisscross instead of just trying to do perfect circles all the way around, it does help you space them out a little bit better. I got a little bit wonky right there, but it's okay. Again, just wipe off your extra. Don't press too hard. All right, then I'm going to take the next color, which will be yellow. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go dot, dot across. And I'm going to go dot, dot across, and then two in between. So again, like I said, it's really just you keep building upon it and working your way out. So next one I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one again, the first one we used, and I'm going to use the color green. Again, we're going to go dot, dot across. Also, you really don't need too much paint on your um, paint palette or your paper plate, whatever it is you're using. Um, you really don't use that much when you're just doing tiny little dots like this. Some of mine I accidentally put out way too much just because I haven't used this paint in a while and a little bit old, so it was kind of hard to push out. All right. Now, I'm going to use my pencil. I'm going to use the blue. I'm going to dip it in, and it is a sharpened pencil. So I'm going to dip it in. I'm going to do a dot. And I'm going to do little dots down. Reload. Little dots down. I'm going to do this on all of them. Now, this is just like a super basic one. You can make them way more detailed. You can make them even less detailed if you really wanted to. It's completely up to you. You don't have to follow this little tutorial that I'm doing exactly. I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of an idea on how to make them. With Zentangles though, we worked a lot with lines. Um, granted, I don't think, oops, I don't think we did Zentangles this semester. I think that's something we did last semester. But Zentangles, you just keep building up lines. With these, we're more using a lot of tiny circles. Sorry if you can hear my dog going to town on a bone. She is just sitting below me, chewing on this huge bone. All right, so now I have that part all done. Make sure you wipe off your pencil if you wanna be able to keep using it. I'm going to use my big Q-tip again. I'm going to use the purple this time. I'm just going to put one big dot in each of these sections. Make sure that you reload your Q-tip, otherwise you'll get like these wonky like holes in the middle. And you want them to be nice, full, solid colors. Oops. Make sure you don't put your finger in it like I just did, because I'm a dummy. 
All right, so now I have all of my rainbow colors. Maybe now I go back and I start going the other way. I could continue with the red or I could now like go to blue and then green and go backwards, which I think I'm gonna do because I like the way this blue looks a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna go draw little lines like this. Again, I am going to share the link on the website to the lady's um, YouTube channel that does a bunch of these. Um, the one that I'm doing, I watched her do, and I thought that looks pretty easy. I could probably show you guys how to do this one. But she has some that are like way more difficult, way more advanced. Um, she just makes really cool ones. She has some that are like in the shapes of flowers and they're just they're really pretty so plus it's just kind of fun to watch i like to watch youtube videos like this um i changed the setting on them to make them like double speed if you guys don't know how to do that it's just you hit the little setting button and then it says playback speed and you can switch it you can make it slower you can make it faster i like to speed these up because i you don't really need to watch somebody do it in real time, I guess. So. Alrighty. Let's see. Gonna go back with some green. Gonna do some dots in between each of these. Now the cool thing about acrylic paint, which is what, or temper paint, which is what you should be using for this, they dry pretty quickly. So here in a second, the middle part of ours should already be pretty dry. So we're gonna actually be able to go back and add little dots on top of things. If you want to, you could also go around these um, outer dots as well. And you could do the same thing that we did with the blue up here. Dot like that. I would also suggest if you do find a rock, paint it black because I think the paint just really pops so nicely whenever it's on black. It just looks really neat. Makes it look a lot more vibrant. Whereas if you just do it on like a regular rock that's like brown and spotted, the colors just, they won't pop quite as much. Yep. So you can keep doing that all the way around. All right, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna maybe add some dots inside some of these ones inside. So maybe I wanna do like complementary colors. So I'll start with the yellow because these dots are pretty small up in here. So yellow, the complement of yellow is purple because they are across from each other on the color wheel. So I'm gonna dip my pencil in purple and inside the yellow, I'm gonna do teeny tiny dots of purple. So like I said, we really are just going back and you just keep adding to it and it just slowly starts to look more and more complex, but really they're easy to make. All right. Next color is green. The complement of green is going to be red. They are across from each other on the color wheel. So and this time I switched over to my actual q-tip i'm using the small one though i'm obviously not going to use the same size that i used for the green dot so then i'll just completely cover up the green dot and that ruins everything um the complement of blue is orange but it's going to be kind of hard to do that maybe i can add some blue to these ones And then I'll go back and I'll add some yellow to my purples. This purple out here might not be dry yet, but you really should wait till it's dry. 
for the sake of this video though, I'm just gonna go ahead and risk it for the biscuit. The biscuit being, I don't know, trying to finish this, I guess. Alrighty. So yeah, that gives you an idea on how to make these. Again, you can make them on rocks, you could do it on paper. Just keep adding to it. Like I've already said a few times, I will add the link to the lady that um, has a YouTube channel on this because she makes really cool things. She has like some that kind of look like peacock, fe peacock feathers, flowers, just plain circles like this one. She's just full of really neat ideas. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope that you guys take the opportunity to go find some rocks and make them on some rocks. And make sure that you send them to me because I would love to see how they turn out. Alright guys, I will see you next time.